There's the short-term debt cycle, long-term debt cycle, and productivity. Um, we're in the late stages, maybe the seventh, eighth inning of the um, business cycle, right? We're, we're in the part of the cycle where there's been um, a lot of monetary easing. Central banks built, uh, bought $15 trillion worth of assets, pushed them up a lot. Uh, we had the benefit of a corporate tax cut, all that stimulation, and as a result, we're in the late part of the cycle where there's a tightening of monetary policy. And, um, you, know, you know, so it's kind of the late part of the cycle with assets uh, fully priced. And, um, and then in terms of the longer term debt cycle, um, <clears throat> we're at a point where interest rates are uh, comparatively low. The capacity of central banks to ease monetary policy is limited. The United States is limited. In other countries it's limited. So that's where we are. And we're in a position also where we have um, the emerging power on China competing with uh, the United States and established power as an effective competitor. And uh, that's very much like uh, the late 1930s. So that's where I think we are. Um, let, let me just go back for one second. I mean, the 1930s are a complicated time, but, but specifically on, on the interest, uh, on, on, on the issue of, of the Fed and, and interest rates in terms of where we are in, in the cycle, uh, there is a debate, as you know, uh, about whether uh, interest rates should get hiked and how strong the economy really is or isn't. What do you think? Um, right now, Bill, the Fed expects to rate, raise uh, one more time this year <clears throat> and probably three, two or three times next year. I think that uh, there's a problem in terms of asset prices. I, I, I think that rate of increase would not be able to be made because <clears throat> we've um, raised interest rates to a level where it's uh, hurting asset prices. Uh, we have now um, a flat yield curve. We have, in other words, the you can now get in a two to five year note, you can get um, about 3%, and you have a no price risk, to, no material price risk. So we're in a situation right now that the Fed, I think, will have to look at asset prices before they look at um, economic activity. It's a difficult position because that stimulation that they have in the form of those tax cuts are, is a big stimulation into the capacity limitations as we have low slack so that the, the economy itself will pressure them to raise rates, I think probably too much. I think we have a supply-demand problem for bonds that will particularly come next year and the year after. In other words, because of that tax cut and the deficits, we'll have to sell a lot more bonds, and, and the United States itself can't absorb that quantity of bonds. So we're going to have to sell those bonds to uh, investors in other countries. You look at the portfolios of those, and they have a lot of those. Um, they're sort of overweight in that bonds. So I think there's a supply-demand imbalance and a difficult position for the Federal Reserve. I just think it's to, a risky situation. Just to put a fine point on it, though, it sounds to me like you're recommending that if you were Jay Powell, you might slow down, similarly to what the president has suggested. Uh, yes, I, um, I would look at what is discounted in the curve and realize that that's discounted in all asset prices. It's discounted in bonds, it's discounted in equities, it's discounted in real estate, private equities, that rate of uh, change in there. And I would keep it certainly not faster than that, and I would keep it probably less than that. I think the, um, you know, the risks are asymmetric on the downside because um, if we have a little bit overshoot in the inflation rate, you're going to be in a position where um, it's not going to be a, a problem. Who cares right. if you have 2.5% or something? It's not going to run out of control. But if you have a downturn, first in asset prices, and then you have a downturn in the economy, it's, it's an asymmetric risk. It's a serious risk. We have an economic polarity and populism, which is an issue. If you have a downturn, I think the conflict is going to be greater. Right. I think that's a big issue. And I think also the tools are not as effective on the downside. So I would err on the side of being yeah, easier in monetary policy. Well, let me ask you, let me ask you a question. discounted in the curve. If you're, if you're concerned about asset prices, uh, one of your peers, uh, Dan Loeb, uh, recently just wrote, we have delevered our portfolio, reducing our tech exposure meaningfully and grown our short book. We expect to be net sellers over the next few months if markets rally. As an investor out there right now, how cautious are you? Well, I... 
as I say, I think we're in the we, we've gotten a, a lot of the good news behind us, um, and I think that assets are fully priced, and I think there's asymmetric risk. So, um, like I say, we're uh, well, I, I hey. won't talk about our positions, but I think um, I, uh, I don't I think the upside position is not as strong right. and relative to the risks. Right, it never made that much sense to me, but you said we don't have the tools to address uh, a downturn. Some people think we need to raise raise rates to get to a point where we can cut them, if we need to cut them, which I don't know if that, does that make any sense to you that we need that's some drive? A, that, that, sound, that sounds like pretty, that sounds like pretty bad logic to me. <laughs> but you know what they're saying, uh, that that word, if, if you're up there at six, you, you know, you can keep cutting until, like, but when you're all the way down near zero, you don't have a lot of uh, cuts that you can make in case there is a downturn, but um, I don't yeah, know, but, to go up but, to but, come but, down but, is crazy. Yeah, I, I mean, but I'm, I'm telling you that what it, what's built into the curve, what's built into the, to all the markets is the existing interest rate. Right. So you raise that that way, is that's not good. I think uh, the Federal Reserve should use more macro prudential policies. In other words, there are parts right now, there are some bubbles emerging. There are some uh, issues in terms of places. But macro prudential policies, what, what that means is it has a regulatory authority that can um, deal with certain bubbles as they're emerging to, tr uh, to be more targeted than using right. interest rates as a whole.